Hello everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the new SSH session commandlet. We're also going to be going over on how do you handle that fingerprint for that host in your initial connection. Either you're going to be able to accept that fingerprint manually, you're going to be able to automatically accept that fingerprint, or you can actually just ignore the fingerprint altogether. And we're also going to be working on what is that SSA session object? What are the different components that make that session? We're going to be covering how do you handle sessions? How do you add them, remove them? In addition to that, we're also going to be covering how do you authenticate using SSH keys and some of the caveats when it comes to using SSH keys in the case of POSH SSH version three, where the credentials that we use are only useful for decrypting the SSH key itself, and they're not used for auth also authenticating is an either or. So let's get to it. We're going to start looking at the help information for new SSH session. I like starting with every commandlet, looking at the help information, and I like doing full when it comes to that because it will show me both parameter sets all parameters and examples. If we look right now at new SSA session, we're going to notice two parameter sets. And the main difference between them is that I can either specify a key string, which is the content of the key, or a key file itself for me to perform the connection. When we look now at the parameters, you're going to notice that each one of the different parameters have help information, and they also can be passed by property name via the pipeline. So this allows me to pipe from one side to the other, probably from a CSV file or from a clay XML and be able to automate some of the tasks. I like doing this for almost all of the functions and commandlets inside of Posh SSH to just simplify the process and make it more flexible. Now, when we look at the examples, for the commandlet. Now, when you see, we actually include examples for each one of the different functions. In this case, it is a connection where I'm getting the credentials to a host. So let's start first with a connection to a Linux box that I have here in my home lab. I'm going to do new SSH session computer name. I'm going to specify the IP address of the computer, 192.168.1.100. I'm going to specify the credentials for user Carlos, and you're going to see it's going to ask me for my password. And then it's going to ask me, hey, do you want to validate this fingerprint? Uh, to that, I answer yes. Now, what if we want to auto accept this? The way that we would do that is that we would just, let me go now to another server here. I'm going to add the parameter to accept key. This is a Raspberry Pi that I also have in my lab system. So I do accept key. I'm going to do verbose so we can see what's going on behind the scenes. It's going to ask me for my password. I enter my password and you're going to see that that specific fingerprint was accepted and stored in my known host. But what if I don't want to save that key into my known host and I just want to just get the connection and ignore that the way I would do that is with the dash force parameter. So I'm going to specify here another host that I have, 192.168.11 UBNT. This is a ubiquity router in my ne in my lab network. I'm going to do dash force, then verbose so we can see what is going on. And then I'm going to specify the password for this ubiquity router. And as you can see, the fingerprint was not validated and I was able to connect to the host itself. Now let's go over and take a look at different sessions that because we've just created a couple of them. So get sessions, we can see that we have three active sessions to three different hosts and each one has their own session ID. If I want to get one specific session, uh, I'll use the get session commandlet, but now let's just look at the help information. And you're going to see that I can specify by session ID or by computer name. Uh, I can specify multiple computers or multiple session IDs, and I can get exact match for that host name if I wanted to. If not, I can use wallcards. 
I do also include examples and documentation for each one of the parameters, as always, in my help information. Now, let's just get one specific session. I'm going to do get session, session ID. I'm going to get the first one, zero. Here I get all of the information for it. I can actually just pipe this to format list for all our properties. And you're going to see that I have an object here for Renzi SSH SSH client. Now let, let's put this into a variable so I can see more information about this object, the different properties and methods that I have available to me. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to do session, the session object itself. I see that I have one property called connection info. Let's take a look at that connection info property itself. And when I take here a look, you can see that I have quite a bit of information, including what were the ciphers used, what was negotiated, what was the different banners that are available. Now, if I pipe this into get member, I'm going to get methods and properties. Everything inside of Posh SSH is a .NET object. So I do recommend that you pipe all of the different objects into get member so you can get a better feeling of all of the different actions that you can take against each one of these different objects. So right now, let's just remove one of these sessions from the sessions that are stored in memory. I'll do the remove session command, and then I can just specify a specific one by session ID. Here, I just remove that one. But let's say that I want to just remove them all. Uh, one of the things I can actually do uh, here, as you can see that I only have two available. Now, let me just remove all of them. I'm going to do get sessions. I'm just going to pipe everything into remove SSH session. As I told you, one of the things that I actually work a lot is to make sure that everything can be piped from one side to the other to make it a lot simpler in the command line and kind of provide a bit of more flexibility. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use keys. So I'm going to specify a key file that is stored under the user's profile since it was generated using the built-in SSH commands of Windows. I'm going to specify credentials. Now the password for the credentials are used not for validating the user account, but for decrypting the key. At this moment on SS Posh SSH version three, I'm not able to have both authentications. It's something that I'm planning for version four, but right now the credentials are only used to decrypt the key. That's going to ask me for my password. That password is for the key. I'm able to decrypt it and I have a connection. Now, how about if I just get the content of the key and I use that for accessing the host? Uh, this was actually a feature a long time ago for those users that use enterprise password vaults and were keeping keys inside of the password vault. And they were only getting kind of like the text file of the key and they didn't want to place that on disk. So I'm going to do key content equals, and I'm going to just get the raw content of the key itself that we just used for the previous connection. Now that I have it saved into the variable, I'm going just to replace key file on the previous command for key content. And do key content, key string, sorry. I'm going to then add the key content. Hit enter, enter the password for the key. And there I have it. I have a connection now to the host using a key file. So as you saw, when the case of Posh SSH, each one of the different commandlets has help. They have examples. We're able to create SSA sessions against hosts. We have flexibility on how do we accept that initial fingerprint for the host itself. We can see that everything inside of Posh SSH actually it's returning an object to PowerShell. So we have classes, methods, and we have kind of like a rich environment under the hood that you can take advantage of for every object that gets returned by Posh SSH. In addition to that, you saw that there are some caveats when it comes to working with SSH keys in the case of Posh SSH version three. And let's not forget that the same concepts that we're using right now for this SSH sessions actually also apply for SFTP sessions and for SCP. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next video.